Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Laurent Ferrier Galet Micro Rotor in stainless steel. You can see and you can purchase this micro rotor automatic in stainless steel on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and naturally complete pricing details for this double direct impulse escapement micro rotor automatic watch. Now the Galet micro rotor released in 2011 was the second product family under the newly minted brand Laurent Ferrier. However, the brand namesake, a longtime master watchmaker and complication specialist for Patek Philippe, has a history dating back almost half a century. A master of his trade and local to Geneva, he struck out on his own with his son and a few business partners releasing their first watch in 2010. While well, this sequel to the Torpion represents perhaps the most artisanally exquisite and intellectually satisfying watch in the range. Now simple on the top, complicated when you flip it over. This is a watch that gratifies on every level, including ergonomics. As you can see, the watch is 40 millimeters, which is a contemporary men's watch size without being undersized or oversized. Now the watch is 11.4 millimeters thick, but with such a generously rounded dome style case flank and bezel that it will slide underneath any dress cuff. And from lug to lug, the watch has a compact 46.9 millimeter span horizontally across the wrist, such that I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as compact as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference with a handsome proportion and physical security. Now you can see that the watch has a wonderful ergonomic shape to it as the lugs drape themselves over the edge of the wrist. So even if your wrist is very small, all, the lugs bend around your wrist rather than flaring out stridently beyond it. Now the strap, in addition to the fact that you can simply pull it straight down, it's not constrained in its motion, is buttery smooth, an incredible grade of leather used here. Not only incredibly soft, but incredibly handsome with a rich natural grain on the top. It is a black monotone stitch. It has a sheer side, so it's got a, a straight squared off drop off from the top on the underside. Again, more calfskin, very, very, very smooth, very comfortable, very well chosen. And the pin buckle, though a simple component, is Laurent Ferrier branded and slightly stylized in the undulating fluid form that is endemic to the model line. I should say really the entire range and no one model line. All of the Laurent Ferrier cases and buckles are gorgeous. Now you can see it's all in high polish. And if you saw the Urverk Laurent Ferrier only watch from 2017, you understand the essential Laurent Ferrier design ethic. Essentially, other than the junction between case band, bezel, and case back, avoid straight lines. And you can see that watch lives the mantra right in my hand. Almost like a piece of drawn molten metal flash frozen in place, it has a fluid form to it and many sensuous compound curves. The dial is simple, but thoughtfully executed and it achieves the primary purpose of a timepiece. It is extremely easy to read and tell time. Now outboard you can see a dimple style minutes track with long drawn and pointed white indices raised above the dial and it's almost like an explosion in reverse as though the cannon pinion at center had a magnetic or gravitational quality and it was drawing out these individual almost icicles of white material. It really feels as if there's an action, a dynamism, a pull towards the center of the dial. The hands give exactly the opposite impression. As you can see, they are what's known as the Asagai style, or essentially French for an African spear, the idea being that these appear long, almost like, almost like lances, and they do have that quality about them. The other fortunate property of them is that they are properly long and if I pull the crown out and I draw the minute hand around the dial you can see how it extends to the very cusp of the dimple style minute track and the hour hand just barely clears the indices themselves. The length is perfect. Now you'll also note that the dial is of a matte black finish so there's no risk of glare. The countersunk subseconds does have a slight guilloche pattern to it so rather more dynamic in the light. You can see it's in high contrast to the matte center dial without having a different coloration. You have contrast while maintaining the black monotone base. Now turn the watch over and you could argue that this might be the timepiece's most attractive facet. You're looking at the in-house caliber FBN 229.01. It was actually developed as a collaborative effort between the 
refugees from B&B Concept, which became Fabrique du, du Temps. You had Matthias Boutet go to Hublot to run the MP department, and Michel Nivas and Enrico Barbasini formed Fabrique du Temps. So they helped with the computer work, the CAD CAM modeling of the movement. Laurent Ferrier handled the final execution, including finishing and regulation. So you can see the watch movement, designed by a collaborative effort and built in house by Laurent Ferrier, is a 72 hour power reserve micro rotor automatic. Now it uses pawls rather than bearings to operate. So there's no sense of a rattle or play or an audible winding. It's nothing like modern unidirectional winders like Jaeger LeCoultre that features ceramic rotor bearings. This is a silent and smooth system thanks to the Paul based winding. You also note that the watch features a balanced beating weigh at 21,600 vibrations per hour. The 72 hour power reserve feeds that 3 hertz balance which is born on a black polished balance cock. You can see the level of finish is exquisite. More on that in a moment. What you might not be able to see, although you can just see their outer rims, is that the watch features a natural escapement, which is a double direct impulse system featuring two wheels that directly impulse the balance for paramount efficiency as well as reduction of parasitic losses in the transfer of energy. There is a silicon alternating lever between them that locks and unlocks the two wheels in turn. And the watch all told features a remarkable combination of chronometric precision. Many of these timepieces have been certified as Besançon Observatory chronometers. That is a fully cased up test of chronometric precision. And also artisanal virtuosity in the finishing as the 35 jewel entirely hand finished caliber is also a feast for the eyes, not simply the intellect. Now, the watch does not feature hacking, which might be the only refinement it lacks, but in every other respect, it is an exceptional piece. Now first, it's adjust in six positions, which you never see. Chronometer standard is five positions, and I've been told by many master watchmakers that for political reasons, most brands adjust to five positions. They zero out all of the error and deviation in those five positions, and they crown all the error into the sixth position that is not measured. Laurent Ferrier tests and regulates in all six positions. Now beyond the fact that the watch is very well built, very accurate, and very well adjusted, there is the finishing. We talked about the black polish. You'll note it on all of the screw heads, and you can see as I turn the watch flush to the camera, everything that is black polished will turn black when it is flush. It's the highest standard of optical finish and the most time consuming. You'll also note no fewer than five interior angles here as the watch has an interior cleft right here at the center wheel. You can see one interior angle and then four more within the aperture cutout to reveal the individual direct impulse wheel bridge beneath. And so you can see five interior angles, abundant black polish, a richly textured, non-stamped Cote de Genève. This is the real thing, not stamp execution. You also note that the bridge for the winding mass is entirely black polished and continuously rounded. Now when I turn the watch flush to the camera, you can also see the anglage on the edge of the bridges and components such as the balance cock as there is a mirrored hand laid rounded finish to the edge of each bridge that is again not mechanically applied but executed by hand in excruciating fashion. There's also a guilloche pattern to the winding mass and a tight and even perlage or rounded overlapping engine turning about the base plate. This is Geneva watchmaking to the highest standard mechanically and aesthetically. 30 meters water resistant, it's no sports watch, but everything about it is simply a pleasure, right down to the fact that the semi-recessed crown, again aesthetics, is a pleasure to wind. So though it's an automatic winder, real thought was put into the tactile sensation of winding this watch automatically. It satisfies on every level. Find out why on our website.